All right, check, check, check. Can you hear me? Everybody good? Can you get a thumbs up from somebody? There, okay, see it? All right, uh, we'll let Coach make an opening statement, yeah, then we'll open up for questions. You have a white water or something? Thank you. Um, Y'all ready? Really proud of our football team. That, that was a hell of a win. That's a hell of a football game. Auburn's got a good team. Our guys fought their ass off. Uh, they kept hanging in there regardless of the circumstances and situation. Uh, and, and they made the plays we had to make. Uh, did not start off, thank you very much, did not start off very well in the game, obviously. A field position in the first quarter killed us offensively. Uh, we had the 80 or 90 yard power play called back. Uh, but. Um, you know, we're 16 to 14 at halftime. I thought we were very sloppy defensively, just, just to got to clean some things up. It's a thing here or there. You know, you look at the one, uh, we, we go up 11 on the field goal, and then we, they call a zone read on the, on the backside. Or John doesn't pup down the line of scrimmage and play it correctly. We got the call we want. We got to clean those things up. And that's where we let them out of the gate on some things. They did get some yards. Uh, but at the end of the day, they had 83 snaps. Uh, they played with some tempo. Uh, when we got in the red zone, we played really good. And, and they had a hard time throwing it down the red zone. When you get in the short zone, I felt good on the last drive the entire time. I kept telling T-Rob, make them expend time. They have no timeouts left. Just expend time and make them make the hard throws. And so uh, really proud of how we, we stood up there. You know, offensively, we got, a, we got a, some balance in the second half. We ran, found some things to run the ball. Uh, we had some critical third down conversions. Uh, Shaw was good again on the night. Uh, so again, we've got to continue to progress and improve, but we needed to win a game like this against a really good football team at home, uh, defensively or offensively, to be on the field to win the game at the end, and we did it on defense. Uh, but I'm really proud of our football team. They, they showed a lot of reserve, uh, resolve and fight, uh, and, and the adversity early in the game continued to fight, and as Auburn, as I knew, that program would, would battle back. Our guys answered, and uh, really proud of our football team. It's a hell of a win, and I'll open up for any questions. David with the first one. Hey, Will, you mentioned some of the uh, offensive stagnation on the long drives. Just what was the difference between when you guys got the ball off a turnover as opposed to just running the ball in a regular drive? Because off of turnovers, you guys marched right downfield and scored. 21 points. So I would say probably as much as anything, field position was a little bit of a – Mike feels a little com more comfortable calling some things in those areas. I think, uh, you know, we always talk in terms of, of capturing the moment to our football team as far as, you know, gaining the momentum and riding the momentum. And, uh, and that was something I think our offense took advantage of. We had some critical third down conversions, again, offensively. We were not very good on third down on defense, especially early in the game. We were better in the second half. But I want to thank – they had probably had four conversions in the first half, two or three – on, on Bo's legs. And I want to comment on Bo Nix as a great competitor. That guy competes his butt off. I mean, some of the things he did, he's a very difficult guy to get down in space. Uh, you know, when you're rushing four guys, you're playing coverage. Our guy, the most expending thing you do as a football player is rush the passer. And we got tired at the end, and that guy's a battler. And he kept competing in the game and uh, ought to be very proud of his performance today. Dick Cox. Did you feel pretty good going at the half knowing you might have been down two to three scores, but you actually were able to battle back and get it to a two-point game? going in at the half. Uh, you know, Dick, I felt really good. To me, to, we, were, we were sloppy, in my opinion, on defense. And then offensively, when we had some, a chance to get some drives going, we got them going and we moved the ball OK, not what we need to be. Uh, but but to, be, to be down two going at halftime, I felt great, to be honest with you, Dick. Mike Kuba. Coach, what can you say about J.C. Horn and the way his performance was today defensively? If there's a better corner out there, I want to see him. Uh, the guy's an outstanding football player. Got two interceptions today. He calls the other one uh, on a tip pass. Uh, he and, uh, and Williams battled all day. It was a great battle. Uh, we matched him up on him and felt good about, you know, where we were going to be in those situations. But some really nice plays on the ball. The guys always had great ball skills for whatever reason. I know some of it hadn't, hadn't been targeted very much, just be honest. So, but, but he's a heck of a player, and, uh, and I'm very happy for him today. Wish he had gotten in the end zone there on that one return. Josh Kendall. Will, this is more on J.C. It, he was cl clearly seemed to be shadowing Seth. I wanted to know if that was part of the plan or just the way the defensive alignments worked. No, that's part of the plan. Why did you think taking Seth away was so important today? The momentum changing plays that he makes, uh, you know, in games against smaller corners. 
and you go back through his career, you go back to the Oregon game last year, you go back to against some of the guys he's matched up on, it's good coverage. The guy's in position. The guy's got really good ball skills and judgment, and he attacks the football down the field. Now, I also want to – we've talked about J.C. I want to give John Dixon some compliments. You know, we're down Izzy. We're down Cam right now. And, and those two guys played 83 snaps at corner against Schwartz and Williams. And that's hard as hell now. Those two guys are really good players, and Nix has got a strong arm. And those two guys played every single snap. And I'm uh, really proud of those guys. I'm, you know, I know that J.C. had two tremendous plays in the game, and John had some nice cutoffs in the game, but really proud of that. Helmet. On, on J.C., one more on J.C. Do you think that that's, his most, that's the most action he's gotten in the game since he's been here in terms of people not being afraid to throw at him? Off the top of my head, I would say absolutely. Uh, but, you know, he, he doesn't get a lot. He didn't last year, and so he hasn't had a whole lot this year. But he's a guy that can make interceptions on the ball when he's there. It just hasn't always happened in a game situation. We always knew he could. Hale McGranahan. Well, it seemed like Coach Bobo was pretty committed to trying to run between the tackles. How much did, did that – and if so, how much did that pay off for you guys in the second half as you were able to hit some stuff on the edge and, and find some more room there in the middle? You know, one of the things that I always admired about Mike as a play caller going against him was his commitment to the run, his commitment to being able to try and run the football. And as a play caller, it's hard. You know, sometimes you want to get in a fancy overload pressure on third down and that's all fine and good, and they did it one time to us, and, and we creased the power on them on a critical third and four situation. So, I mean, there's things that, that he does as a play caller that presents issues and being committed to the run. And, again, it may not be pretty early. You know, it may, it may not be always what we want, but in the defensive play caller's mind, you always got to remember he's going to run the ball. And that's always kind of gets you out of sometimes of some calls that you might like. Mitch Brown. Coach, how happy are you that you guys are punting it in in the red zone instead of having to send out Parker White? And uh, how much is that uh, going to be an emphasis as you guys continue to move forward? Touchdowns in the red zone. We were 7 of 10 coming in today, which 70% is our goal. I think uh, LSU led, the, led the, the country last year at 85 or 86%. So 70% is good. We were 90% scoring touchdowns. And the only time we didn't was the, uh, the, the, the drive that you guys loved against Florida there at the end that we didn't get it in, which we needed two scores. And we didn't score that touchdown. The second one doesn't matter. But – uh, that being said, uh, I, it's good to get touchdowns in the red zone. Gene Sapikoff. Well, considering, you know, who he was playing against in the 83 snaps, how, how did that performance by J.C. compare to the best of any cornerback you've ever coached, which is obviously a lot of good cornerbacks? The guy is elite, Gene. He's an elite player. Um, he is playing at an extremely high level. For whatever reason, today was his first two picks, and I can't. I have a hard time sometimes explaining that. Um, but again, he hasn't had a lot of targets, and and knowing them, and they're going to run their system, and I respect that uh, with Chad because I think he's a heck of a football coach. Uh, we we knew that there was going to be some balls and some opportunities uh, for JC against Williams, who we think is an outstanding player. Dick Cox. Coach, talk about both your running backs today, how physical they ran and just how many yards they got after hit. It looked like it was a short game, but after you got up, it was you got an extra two to three yards that they were able to get their, their yards after hit. Those guys finish forward, you know, and both guys run behind their pads. I've um, been so proud of Deshaun and how he's grown up and matured, and obviously Kevin's having a fantastic year. But those guys, those guys right now for us are a really good one-two punch. They do a good job of coming in there and gaining positive yards and doing the things we've got to do for us to be successful. Kim Gaskins. Coach, you talk a lot about, you know, every game having those five to seven plays that determine the outcome, and it felt like today – you guys were on the right side of all of those plays. What was different about uh, your, your guys being in the positions to make those game-changing plays? Well, number one, as a coach, you got to put them in position. And number two, your players have got to take advantage of that. And you look at the comeback throw on our sideline with J.C. made, that was a momentum swing, huge momentum swing in the game where it was in the balance a little bit there. And then we go in and, and get the touchdown there. You look at uh, the tip ball off the interception to Jalen Dickerson. Again, those, those are momentum-changing plays 
that you either play with the momentum or you've got to go capture it back. And sometimes when you got to capture it back, you exude so much energy capturing it back, it's hard to kind of keep your, your, your wits about it in the game. And uh, again, I'm really proud of our players because we just kept playing in the game. We got a sign in our locker room that we hit every time we go out. I told them before we went out, I said, leave no doubt. Leave no doubt about our effort, our toughness, our discipline, the core values of our program. Uh, that's going to come out today because I know that organization and I know how they're run. And, uh, and I, I was very, very pleased that we were in a situation uh, to win the game, whether it was on offense, defense, or on special teams. It turns out it was on defense to go make a stop at the end. Josh Kendall. Will, specifically, Shai's catch on third down there at your sideline. I guess it would have been third, no, fourth quarter. How big a play was that? Huge, unbelievable play. I mean, the guy in McCready's a really good player. Uh, 23 is an outstanding corner. And, uh, but Shaz is, you know, again, the guy's playing the elite ball. He's playing really well. Mike's doing a great job of targeting. I think he had eight, yeah, eight receptions today and probably another, you know, five or so targets. Uh, but he's a really good football player. He's somebody that every time you line up as a defensive coordinator, you got to account for him. You guys are, all right, how are we going to deal with this guy? Because he's a, he's a problem. Uh, and we got to continue to run the ball well, continue to have some more guys step up in the passing game. Josh made a really nice catch on the sideline and knifed the defense, which was great for him. Uh, you got to continue to have some more guys continue to step up for us. But it was a great locker room there at the end, really proud of our players and, and the resiliency that they showed to play the, the, the type game. Kier Thomas had two sacks today, huge in the ball game. Hill McGranahan. I wanted to ask you about Kier. How, how nice was it to get him back and he had that sack in the fourth quarter and, and it, he tripped up Nick's on that scramble there on that drive? As well. The guy plays so hard, man. He leaves it all on the field. It's really important to him. You know, playing at the University of South Carolina is important to him. His teammates, his coaches, his, you know, the guy's got a, he's got the tremendous heart about himself. And I'm so proud of seeing him, a young guy maturing from a freshman to where he is now. The adversity he faced last year, you guys have no idea. You know, we sent him to the specialist of specialists for ankles, and we couldn't figure out what happened, and it was the infection, it was this, it was that, and no one could give any answers, man. And the guy just kept fighting, he kept biding his time. And really, the guys graduated, Jay Kano, those guys were kind of his buddies last year. Well, they all moved on, here he is coming back, and then, and then we're sitting him last week because of a situation that I don't want to get into with, with uh, COVID. And it's just, I mean, it's just, it's hard, man. This is a hard, hard deal for him, uh, but really proud of him and how he's handled the whole situation. Chantel? Uh, Coach, we know what the win can kind of do for players moving forward just in terms of confidence and everything, but you as a head coach, like, what does a win like this do for you? Oh, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm happy for our players. Your players need to have some confidence in what they do, but, uh, but I'm fine. Cam Gaskins? Coach, I know you guys treat all wins the same, and you're just happy to get to walk away with the win. But with this being uh, the first win over Auburn since 1933 and snapping a 10-game losing streak against that program, does that mean a little something extra for you guys? Well, we haven't beat Auburn since they've been in the Southeastern Conference, which is important. We recruit in Atlanta. We recruit in the state of Georgia. We, obviously, we've done a nice job in the state of Alabama as well. And uh, anytime you're able to beat an opponent uh, to show that uh, you know, you know, where you are, uh, that's always important. So I think it is. It's critical. The last question goes to Josh Kendall. Well, Shaw seems to thrive when there's a little bit of interplay, I guess, between the competition. He, he's done that a couple of times this year. He seemed to be energized by it today. But how do you walk that line with him to keep that on the right side of the road? Well, you know what? He's a great competitor, okay? And, and most guys that I've been around that are great competitors and really good football players, you know, they, 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 they get after it. And, and, and he does as well. And I do think it's a fine line. But I would much rather be saying whoa than giddy up. If I'm trying to sit, tell a guy giddy up at this point, we got a problem. So I want a guy that's competitive. I want a guy that, that is a competitive, composed football player. And when he has this composure, and he and I have this conversation a lot, and when you're really composed, man, you're hard to deal with because you still have your competitive edge and you still have your competitive nature. And there is a fine line there. But I, I would rather be saying whoa than giddy up in a lot of situations. And if we had, you know, 110 shots missed, I'd be happy. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. You all have a great one.